Um, but still, what we're seeing is the expansion in the name of green and in the name of technology in order to take land away as well as continue to develop the data center uh, infrastructure that's needed for all the stuff that they're doing. So I thought that was fascinating. I thought I would, I would throw that in there because that's becoming more and more relevant, not only here in the United States, but all over the world. Um, and we see like all the stuff that was going on in the Netherlands with all the, uh, the farmland and stuff like that. It's all about getting di more data centers online uh, for these types of things as well. And so we see the advancement of these uh, centers, this, this AI stuff, as well as the power lines, the infrastructure, and they're willing to just take anybody's property to do it, as well as AI and data centers are connected to networks that also allow digital twin technology in the home to spy via router uh, uh, signals. The bigger that they can expand the AI technology and get it more up and running all across the country um, in a more um, physical area. We have it now when it comes to online stuff, but they want more of the physical uh, going on. They're able to access more and more of our private life. Now, I did a breakdown on this entire conference about a year ago, um, but I took a clip out of it because I think it's relevant to this that has to do with AI using your router as a camera in your home. And so basically AI is able to tap into a router and use radio signals off of it that bounce around your room to predict and determine where you are in your house at all times. And so when you see infrastructure like this increasing, it's because they want to increase things like this. Take a look. How about, can we go from Wi-Fi radio signals, you know, sort of like the Wi-Fi routers in your house, they're bouncing off radio signals that work sort of like sonar. Can you go from that to where human beings are to images? So what they did is they had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. Stuff that you only thought happens in the movies is actually happening now. The technology is working that way. By using radio signals from your router, internet router, and bouncing around the room, it can now predict and determine where you are or anybody is in your house at all times. This is part of the digital twin technology uh, that has to do with creating a digital twin reality of the world and you and its real time uh, living simulation. It's, it's always real time. And so the reason why they want to advance this type of technology, they want to advance AI and the different spy programs, facial recognition. Uh, they want, they need all these data centers is because they have technology that's able to determine where you are at at all times feed that information into the ai and the ai can then feed it into the digital twin simulation so right now wherever you're at whatever you're doing right now you there's another version of you a digital version of you that is in their simulation running the program and it's always watching and that information is getting fed into that program and so whenever you're moving or whatever you're doing like right now that my digital twin in their program is literally sitting at my desk talking to the camera because it's able all of the information that it has it's able to feed to that and so it's simulating that and they use that and they run it all the time because they're able to predict your movements at all time. Remember 2020 when everybody went into lockdown and they were collecting all this data and everything, they were determining and feeding their program to predict how you will react and feeding that information to the digital twin system. And so this is part of the technology. This is why they want to advance it. This is one of the main reasons they want to do it. So they have predictive um, uh, uh, information so whatever agenda that they put forward, whatever whatever they introduce, they have a strong idea of how it, people are going to react to do it. Whenever you see things happen in the real world, oh, I don't know, like an assassination attempt, 
they're able to do stuff like that because they have already calculated how people are going to react to that situation. How have they done that? All of the information that they've gathered over your years of living have been fed into this and they can determine how you're going to react to do uh, according to that type of stuff. And it's so this is part of the technology system. This is getting into the more, you know, tinfoil hat type of stuff. People still think that this is all fake and a joke and doesn't exist, but it's ultimately <laughs> what's going on. It's how they do this stuff. They've admitted this stuff. I, I even had a video clip that I showed. This was two years ago, I think, even longer. Showed a video clip of, of a guy at a CERN conference. Everybody knows CERN, right? At a CERN conference talking about this digital twin technology, saying it exists and we are using it all day, every day, 24-7. And so this is real stuff that's going on. And so when they continue to do this, you have people like Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, J.D. Vance, Eric Schmidt, all of the people on the left, all of the people on the right, including Donald Trump, that are all on board pushing this exact same technology and data programming. But again, lesser of two evils, right? Sorry, just had to. Uh, I'm not sorry. I'll throw it out there. And last but not least, we've got ourselves some stuff when it comes to 6G. That's right. 6G, not 5G. 6G. You guys ready for 6G? Because they're getting ready for it on their end. Let's take a look, shall we? Coming from a place, study finds. Yeah, don't don't let the fact check thing throw you off. It's not, it, this is a, a, a good place. I get a lot of information here and it all turns out to be true. So don't let the, because I know that instantly throws people off. Don't worry. So 6G revolution begins. Researcher achieve record breaking data speeds uh, coming out of Japan. It says the road to 6G wireless network just got a little smoother. Scientists have made a significant leap forward in terahertz technology potentially revolutionizing how we communicate in the future. An international team has developed a tiny silicon device that could double the capacity of wireless networks, bringing us closer to the promise of 6G and beyond. To infinity and beyond, right? Imagine a world where you could download an entire season of your favorite show in seconds or where virtual reality... Remember the digital twin stuff I just talked about? Where virtual reality feels as real as reality. Keep in mind, what have we heard from people like, I don't know, Ray Kurzweil about the singularity? They want to make it so uh, you don't know where reality ends and the virtual world begins. I've shown RAND reports where they're talking about how they want to make the virtual reality so real that people don't know if they're living in the real world or in the uh, virtual world. And they want to make it so whatever happens in the real world affects the virtual world and whatever happens in the virtual world then reflects the real world. This is exactly what it's referencing when it comes to 6G. And basically uh, <laughs> says this is what the scientists believe terahertz technology can potentially bring to the world. Their work is published in the journal Laser and Photonics Review. So this tiny marvel, a silicon chip smaller than a grain of rice, operates in a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that most of us have never heard of, the terahertz range. Think of the electromagnetic spectrum as a vast highway of information. We're currently cruising along in relatively slow lanes of 4G and 5G. Terahertz technology, that's the express lane, promising speeds uh, that make our current networks look like horse-drawn carriages in comparison. Terahertz waves occupy a sweet spot in the electromagnetic spectrum between microwaves and infrared light. Hang on to that, infrared light. Talk about that in a second. They've long been since uh, they've long been seen as a promising frontier for wireless communication because they can carry vast amount of data. However, harnessing this potential has been challenging due to technical limitations. So still, the researchers say it's not just about speed. This, de this device is incredibly versatile. This information not only uh, enhances the efficiency of terahertz communication systems, but also paves the way for more robust, reliable, high-speed wireless networks. The impl uh, implications of this technology stretch far beyond Netflix downloads. We're talking about advancements that could revolutionize augmented reality, enable seamless remote surgery, or create virtual worlds so immersive you might forget that they're not real. We anticipate that within the next one to two years, researchers will begin to explore new applications and refine the technology. They've already got it. If they're telling us that they're working on it, they've already got it. Keep that in mind. 
So while you may not find a terahertz chip in your next smartphone upgrade, don't be surprised if in the not too distant future, you're streaming holographic video calls or controlling smart devices with your mind. How would you do that? A BCI, brain computer interface, brain chip. The terahertz revolution is coming and it's bringing a future that's faster, more connected and more exciting than we ever imagined. You take AI, which is a supernatural computing system. You take um, quantum computing, which is a supernatural computing system. And you hook it up to Starlink, which is a giant blanket, a giant web over the entire earth right now. And you connect that up with 6G speed. What have you got? Danger Will Robinson. Danger Will Robinson. Okay, a couple things when it comes to 6G. One, we understand how damaging 5G is to the human body. Just imagine what 6G is going to be like. They're going to be cooking. They're going to be cooking people. You think people are sick all the time now? Just wait. One of the downfalls to this, though, that I've I've looked into when it comes to terabytes, or not terabytes, um, ter terahertz, that's right, terahertz, um, is it has to have a line of sight and the distance isn't very long, which means there, there would need to be some type of system that allows constant view and connection for it to communicate. Uh, it's not as long range and can't just like go through walls and stuff. So I don't, I don't, I, I, that's way beyond my pay grade to figure out how they're, how they've done it or will do it. I don't know. Um, but I find that interesting. So I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work. Um, so it has to have that line of sight and the distance can't be too long. So that's what I've, I've, I've read when it comes to terahertz. So that's interesting. Um, the other thing is I always remind people whenever we talk about 6G, whenever we talk about how are, how are they going to power this technology, 6G can be used, uh, can use human body energy in order to power things. I've talked about this in the past on past shows. I showed it in the Showtime episode that I did for The Matrix um, where they have technology. 6G can be used using the, the lights, using LED lights. Um, which they're putting those everywhere and they want to build smart cities out of, uh, by using a simple band on the human, uh, can take human energy and power electronics. And so I've talked about how that's what they want to do. They want to use us as batteries uh, to power this stuff. This is real. This isn't crazy stuff because I know people are like, okay, this dude's out of his mind. No, this is real. Um, and so it's interesting that they want to do this. The other thing, You guys know where I'm going with this. <laughs> yeah, this was back in 2019. <laughs> you guys don't, don't believe me. Trump wants 6G internet as soon as possible. He says, I want 5G and even 6G technology in the United States as soon as possible. It is far more powerful, faster, and smarter than the current standard. American companies must set up their efforts or get behind. There's no reason that we should be lagging behind on this. Yeah. You don't think that he still doesn't want to do that, especially since he's got his team of Silicon Valley techno bros behind him. Keep in mind, he was also the one back in 2019. He had a technology forum with his cabinet and he said, we need to make it so um, force 5G tower rollouts uh, in a matter of a couple months uh, rather than a couple years. He was pushing for the technology advancement as well. Just thought I'd throw it out there. So when you have stuff like smart cities, BCIs, brain computer interfaces, brain chips, uh, faster AI coming in, things like um, the quantum stuff that they want to do, but also the AI technology and all of the facial recognition, androids and robotics are advancing as well. CBDCs, digital IDs, they all will all be able to be improved through 6G infrastructure make everything run faster, smoother, and quicker. Again, I don't know how they're going to do the line of sight thing. They probably already got it figured out. Again, that's way above my pay grade when it comes to this. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is the advancement of this technology is still going forth. And this is stuff that not only me, but many in the prophecy community have been warning about, talking about how horrific it is, how the Antichrist is going to use it, and all this stuff for years. But now all of a sudden, poof! It's gone. Nobody wants to talk about it. 
Why? Because their guy that they like, who is in full support of implementing this stuff and getting it done, you know, that makes them look bad. I don't mean to turn it in that thing. It's just I'm getting so tired of people refusing to talk about stuff that we need to be talking about.